Good morning, everyone. Now, as July draws to a close, most of us are getting ready for some downtime. We've been working really hard all year long, and no pesky clients or last minute conferences are going to get in the way of some well deserved fun. Yet there's one last annoying and unavoidable element waiting for us in August the deadline for our personal income tax and our quarterly VAT payment. Taxes equal money, money whooshing out of your account to be precise. And if you're someone like me, who could make a living out of planning for the future, August represents a period of introspection and analysis to see what could have gone better. And one of the elements requiring constant fine tuning in a freelancer's life is one's rate. Starting out as a self-employed translator or interpreter is normally quite easy because nobody asks you to think about your actual rate. You either go online on the various fora and see what everyone else is charging, or you ask senior colleagues what they are charging. Then years of experience allow you to scale your rate, and before you know it, you've actually become an established freelancer. However, maybe it's time to turn this notion on its head and actually think really carefully about what your own freelance rate should be rather than reverse engineer those rates based on what everyone else is telling you. Indeed, setting a rate you can thrive on rather just than just make ends meet will be essential for your survival in the future. You don't think too much about rates when you've got a cushy 95 job, but then enter the self-employed. While this status does afford you plenty of freedom, the flexibility and uh, psychological well-being, it does have its downsides too, namely cash flow and the excitement of never really knowing how much you'll be taking home in any given month. As a full-time employee, your salary also takes into account various business costs like healthcare, taxes and rent, for example. But when you work for yourself, you've got to cover all of that and a lot more. So how do you go about charging your perfect freelance rate? Start with your target annual income. This is probably the most uh, easiest step. How much money do you want to make? Maybe you just want to make more than your friends, but what is more likely is that you will have to consider specific costs, such as rent, utilities, groceries, uh, emergency money, uh, how much you want to put aside for pension and savings. And then you have to multiply it by at least three. Unlike a salaried job, you cannot predict how much you'll be making. So when in doubt, scale it up. For convenience sake, let's say that the target income is 100,000 euro a year. Sounds like a generous figure, wouldn't you agree? However, you also have to add something else to this number, your expenses and overheads. Freelancers have to roll up their sleeves to get things done. In most cases, that means they also have to consider associated costs, such as potential office space, web hosting, their internet and phone bills, new software, accountant fees, and allowance for uncollected payments, i.e. clients who decide never to pay up, and so on and so forth. You also have to consider income tax, health insurance, as well as a professional liability policy to cover you in case something goes pear-shaped. You should always prepare for the unexpected. Now, all these costs do vary from one country to the next, peaking at 35K in Germany and reaching a comfortable 17K in countries such as Portugal. But let's assume that we are working with a ballpark average of 20,000 euro. So you take 20,000 euro and add it to the previously 100,000 euro. And that's how you get your adjusted target income. Congratulations, you now have your dream salary. Now what? Well, now you should calculate how many billable hours you work. In the EU, there are around 2,080 working hours a year obtained by taking the EU average of 40 working hours a week and multiplying it by 52 weeks in one year. Every country has their public holidays, longer or shorter annual leaves. 
So, I'm going, so I'm going to switch to Portugal now to give you practical figures to work with. So to calculate your billable hours, you would take 2,080 hours and subtract 22 days of annual leave, the same amount workers are entitled to in a regular working contract. 13 national holidays, and let's say, I don't know, around 14 sick days. It's voila, you have 2,031 hours. Not all the hours you spend at your computer, for example, can be billed. Think about prospecting, writing up offers, preparing and sending invoices. That's something you cannot charge your client for. So you would take 25% of those hours and consider them non-billable hours, giving you the grand total of 1,523 hours of being gainfully employed. So you take the adjusted annual salary and divide it by your billable hours. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you get your hourly rate. In this case, that will be 78.79 euro, i.e. the absolute minimum I want to charge clients to reach my dream income. Now, that is assuming you were to work every single one of those hours. And in conference interpreting, we know that that is impossible. So the question is, can all of these rules apply to conference interpreting? And could you make a living solely off interpreting with this fee? Let's find out. First, we have to take these 1,523 hours and divide them by eight hours. These eight hours represent an interpreter's average working day. And that would give us, mm, hold on, let me try that again. It would give us 190 days. So I'd have to work 190 days in the booth to reach my target income. And what would my daily rate be? Well, let's flick my beads on the abacus once again. Uh, that would be 120,000 euro divided by 190. That's 630 euro. Well, there's good news and bad news for me, everyone. The good news is that the um, average Portuguese rate is just 14.6% shy of the current target, meaning I would have to find ways of upselling my services to the clients. Difficult, but not impossible. The flip side of this shiny coin is that the average private market days in Portugal amount to 60 days. And that is if you work in the main language combination, i.e. between Portuguese and English. So even if I were to work that many days, 60, I would fall well short of my target income. What are the solutions then? I would have to increase my rate or find potential other sources of income. A tempting idea I'll have to mull over. But good thing that August is just around the corner and I'll be able to sit down and think about my next professional step. And I do hope all of these calculations will provide you with some food for thought too. Thank you.